Hi, I'm Brian English, Wappler Forum named Hyperbytes, and in this module we're going to start creating our first page content. In this first module we're going to be creating the database structures that is uh, sitting behind that um, page content. And uh, I think if any of you ever saw the old film Karate Kid, do you remember Karate Kid had to go through the wax on, wax off, sand the floor, paint the fence? And he really didn't understand what all that was about. Well, I'm hoping that this is your wax on, wax off moment. And once we go into this next module, you'll see how all of those techniques and ideas that we developed over the previous modules will come together and suddenly you'll go, oh, wow. This is how you use Wappler. This is the power that is behind Wappler. I suddenly don't need any other CMS systems. What a toy WordPress is. This is the way to go. And that's what I hope to achieve in this module. Um, let's keep fingers crossed I can do that. But in the meantime, we need to look at exactly what we're going to do in terms of uh, creating our page content. So I can take you back to uh, our first module when we discussed what was going to be available on this website. We said we're going to have a business index, we're going to have a local history, local attractions, jobs wanted for sale, local events, and of course our cottage industries online presence. So if we go through each of them step by step. First of all, what's a business index? Well, it's a title of a business. It's a description of a business. There may be some pictures regarding the business. We may even allow people to give feedback for the business in the terms of comments. Local history. What's a local history about? Well, <laughs> it's a title. It's a description. It's some images. And again, we might want to even have some comments left about it. So goes on. Local attractions. Title. Text. Image. Comment. Jobs wanted and offered. Exactly the same. Title. Description. It, it, it comments, if needs be, comments saying send me an application form or whatever. For sale uh, items or free items or uh, th that type of thing. It, what is it? It's a title. It's a description. It's some pictures. It's some comments. Even local events is going to be a title, a description, some pictures, some dates as an addition and possibly some comments. The only thing that really stands out as not being comfortable within that totally is the uh, e-commerce. So this is where we're going to massively, massively reduce the amount of work that we have to do because what we're going to do is we're going to use one module and one data structure that will deal with all six of these first items. So we're going to be putting them all in the same table and each entry is simply going to be flagged with the nature of that particular entry so we can use queries to query all of the attractions or all of the four sales from that table without having to have six separate tables. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're back in Wappler here and basically we're going to do this by using a number of different, uh, or, or sorry, a single table and a number of subqueries within that table. So let's have a look at that now. We're going to pop into our database manager and we are going to look at how that is implemented. So let's pop over to our database manager. At the moment, we just have a few tables and we're going to add a new table and I'm going to call that page content. And that is going to hold that header information for any page content that we are going to be added. So we'll just update that ID. Now, what's, what does a page hold? We've just already discussed that. It will have a title. And I'm going to limit that to 255 by allowing it to be a Varchar uh, string. It will need a description. That's obviously going to be a bit more, so let's move that into the realms of a text field. So we've got basically unlimited amount of space to store that. I would like a 
online flag just to be able to flag your content as being online or not so that as you're developing the page obviously you don't want users to be able to see it till you're ready to release it so let's just have an online flag until that flag is set to true then that content will not page appear on our website um, let's have a date created We can either make this, we could make this a um, timestamp or a date time. I'm going to go for a date time um, in the, this particular case. Um, we can add also a um, date edited for the last edit that took place. We can make that a date time. What else do we need? Well, if it's an event item, we're going to need a event start. Again, we'll just settle for date time with that. Just bear in mind, we, are, we do have the advanced tab um, set here so you can see all of these um, different items because we're in basic, you do actually have significantly less choice in terms of the, the data types that you have. If you see there, we're, we're going to be quite limited. Um, what I've got. I'm going to have, uh, they're going to geotag these, so we need a latitude. You see there we've got limitation on them compared with what we have in advanced. So that latitude is going to be a decimal. We're going to have a longitude. And this is primarily in relation to being able to find a um, particular landmark or perhaps a business if we want to go and do that so that's going to be a decimal we also want to make sure they don't appear on our map if we create a map unless they have been geocoded so let's just set a boolean flag for that and we'll call that geo and I think that's probably all of we, we need at this point in terms of what goes into the header Right, so every page we said we'll need a, an image or multiple images. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our subtables that we learned about earlier in the um, join the subtables and multi-references unit. We're going to create a subtable and we're going to call these this table images. Just going to edit that ID, ID again. Image ID. You see there, it's automatically create the link back to the page content. Uh, what's the image I need in? It's going to need a image link, which will just be a text link to the image. And let's also store the um, ID of the person who actually uploaded that image. So if needs be, we can track back in case there's an issue with copyright or in appropriate image or whatever. We can see exactly the person who has uploaded that image. So that's your deal with our images table. Um, we also need to be able to add comments. Um, those of you who are following this probably starting to see now that basically what we're talking about here is a blog page. Um, this is exactly the same structure as we'd use for creating a blog. You would need that other than you might perhaps want to deal with the description part in a slightly different way uh, by maybe using something like Summernote. But we'll come to that later anyway. So at the moment we want comments. Comment ID. Within that, that's obviously linked back to the original page comment. We need to know what the comment itself was. And I suppose we better give them a little bit more than 255 characters, so we'll, we'll make that a text. We want to know when that comment was made. So again, a new field. We're going to call that um, comment date. And we're going to obviously make that a date time. We want to know who's made that comment, that's really important. So uh, I'm going to add the user ID of the person who's making the comment. So that's obviously got to be an integer. 
And I'm just going to add a flag in here. Um, optionally, you might want comments to appear automatically. You might want to put them on hold until such time as they've been checked by an admin or moderator or whatever. So let's just pop a little uh, Boolean flag in here. Um, let's call it uh, yeah um, authorized. And again, that's going to be a Boolean. And I think that's all we need in relation to comments. Now let's think a little bit deeper. If we've got comments, um, I hate to mention the word Facebook, but you know it's an immensely popular platform and it's a platform that people are very comfortable with. And people are used to being able to stick likes and angries and this type of thing on by making a comment, sorry, a, 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 a reaction to a particular comment. So my initial thought was, well, we could just create another subtable here and we can subtable that and just then list the people who have pre created uh, likes or whatever on that. Then I thought, hold on a minute. A, a person, a, a comment can refer to a comment, but it has been made also by a user. So what we effectively have is a many to many relationship there. In terms of you can have uh, many comments referring to a particular page but also then the, the author of that reaction may also made multiple reactions on the different pages so actually in fact what we're talking about here is a multi-reference so I'm going to actually add now a multi-reference to my sub table of the main table I told you this was going to get good and we're going to call that reaction so I'm just going to scroll down a little bit there so we see already it's created our link to our comment ID we also need to be able to have the actual comment itself or the reaction I should say and all I'm going to do is store a single char character in there, L for like, A for angry, but I'm actually only going to use likes um, in this case anyway. So that's a string. I'll, we can limit that to one character uh, rather than leaving the usual 255. And we also now need to create a reference back to that users table. So referencing full circle round to that user ID table and our user ID field. We could store the date that that reaction was placed on it. I'm not going to bother. But I think at this point, so if we look at the structure now, we've got our page at the top. Within a page, it can have multiple images within a subtable and multiple comments within that subtable. That comments table can have multiple reactions, but it's a multi-reference table so also those reactions refer back to the original user which will allow us to do a query to say what reactions has this comment got but also what reactions has that particular user given at the same time so let's uh, hit apply database changes add page content tables and there we are that is the content created totally now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just manually create a record um, just so you can see what the data structure will be like um, when we have populated that. Uh, we'll have a look at data structure and then we'll better understand how we're going to use that at the front end. So to be able to look at that data structure I'm going to have to be going into our table manager and I'm going to be looking at our view and edit data. So let's start simply by adding some uh, data in there. So we started with an empty table, obviously. We're going to add a new entry. I'm going to give it a title of uh, my first page. Description is all about my first 
page. They created, we'll just current date and time. So we can just select from here. I'm literally just wanting to create these uh, latitude and longitude at the moment we haven't set. So that we'll set them to zero. And let's save that record. If we just refetch that, we can see that page content has been allocated reference number one. So now let's add some content to our images. Let's view that content data. Add a new. It refers to our page content one. Our image link https colon four slash four slash uh, domain dot com four slash image dot jpeg. We we'll take the form of something similar to that, um, and the creator. Well, I've only got one, two, oh, two people in here, haven't we? Um, if I remember, I am number 14. Let's save that. We'll just do one image for the moment. Now we're going to go and do the same thing within comments. View edit data, add a new to page comment. Page content one, comment is going to be hello world. Just use the current date. Let's say user 14 added this in. I'm going to add another one. Page comment do. And we're going to be and planet. Current date. And again, added by user ID 14. Let's save that. So now we have a, a parent page with some images and some comments, all we need to do is add a reaction or two in now. Now there is a little technical problem here, um, just in the way that the editor works within Wappler. What I would like to do is to be able to add the comment ID in here, but because we're in a multi-reference and normally this would be updated programmatically, then the actual the table editor doesn't allow me to edit that comment ID field. Let's not worry for a moment because there's a simple way around that. So we're going to have a like from user 14. And I know I said that I'm not going to use alternatives, but we'll put it an angry in just for demo purposes at page 14. Save that. But our problem is now that our comment ID isn't updated. It would be very simple to do in, a, in an API action. That's what API actions do. This is a quirk of the editor itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually edit this in a alternative editor, something called um, SQLite DB Manager. I'm just going to edit those two fields there, and then we'll come back to Wappler and continue on from there. So just give me a Okay, so what I've done is I've opened up a program called DB Browser for SQLite. Really nice piece of uh, programming. And what I really like is I love things that are free. We're going to look on our E drive, which is where I store everything. Community web. Open that table. There we are. We can see those tables that we've created before. And we can see how actually Wepler's prefixed everything albeit we don't see that within the Wappler environment. I'm going to pick that um, reactions table. I'm going to browse the data. No, we've picked the wrong table there. Sorry. That one. And then we're going to browse the data. And you'll see there's those two fields that I want to do update. And I would just like to give them a value it's a bit fiddly to use this. There we are. And I've just added a comment ID reference of one. Let's write those changes. I'm going to close that down totally now. And now if I do a refresh, you see all we've done is we've added our reference there. And I say this is not something that would be an issue if we were doing this fully programmatically. But in this case, for demo purposes, I'm doing this manually. I just had to use that little uh, little fix to do that. So 
we've got our tables there now we've got our data there and now let's have a look at um, actually writing the query so I'm just going to again I'm going to ask create just a demo query here so I'm just going to call a demo which I will be deleting after I just want you to be able to see how the data structures work and how we're going to build this action so we'll start with the database action <coughs> excuse me um, we're going to have a database query our database query is going to query our page content page and I'll just kitchen sink throw everything in there and we need our images and our comments in our images I want to add the image link we've got a creator ID which is effectively the user ID and what I actually want to see what that creator is called so I'm going to call this um, I'm just going to alias this table to um, image users and our link is that the user ID is equal to the creator ID within the images page and that's an inner join that way now we can add in first name last name we're now going to go into our comments sorry didn't mean to do that the comments and we're going to do basically exactly the same thing again we're going to add the comment and the comment date But we also we also need to add that reaction multi reference table. Now I'm going to open that now, and I'm going to actually link that to our user table as well through an inner join. And you'll see it's made that join automatically. But I'm just going to give that an alias of comment author. So now let's look at the reaction that they had, and let's look at who made that comment so that's quite a query we're querying on four different tables with internally a couple of different links as well um, and let's see how we fare when we open that up in the browser and there we are that's exactly what I was hoping to see we have our page content here we have a subquery here with our images. We have a subquery here with our comments. And then we have, again, our reactions to that comment. So we have a page called My First Page with a link to Image JPEG and a comment says Hello World and a reaction of a like and a angry. So that shows that our data structure works perfectly amazingly powerful when you think what we had to do that query a few clicks here a few clicks there a few joins nice and simple and what we've got is the entire page structure that we require for nearly all of this website encapsulated into a single data query so all we've got to do now is use that base that basic data query as a way of producing our page content and then we can just within the actual pages themselves we can choose to present that data in a slightly different form perhaps maybe showing the images on one page in a swiper in another in a gallery maybe with a light box attached or we could have a, a straight uh, forward masonry um, presentation so that all of these pages will look different they'll look as if they've been programmed differently um, but in actual fact this single query would actually produce all of the data that's needed for all six of the segments within this website so i hope you understand now that we've sort of gone from our learning phase now and we're suddenly jumping we've gone up a gear now and we're going to look at how to use all those techniques that we've learned before to be able to produce our pages now once we've got our pages we can do our tweaks like geotagging and putting it in uh, map form etc but it all boils down to everything that we did information wise is going to come from the single one data query so i hope you've enjoyed this segment um we're actually going to want to do this in real life next 
and uh, then once we've got this data running we can actually start looking at putting some front end pages together so I'm sure you're all chomping at the bit to be able to see what we can do in terms of presenting our data in Wapler to our users. So I hope to see you in the next unit and uh, thank you for joining me.